The attainment of one's love is almost unachievable in most Yash Raj films. They are all, at the center stage, simple love stories that end up getting complicated because of reasons of prophecies, of fates and of otherworldly interventions that are of no fault of their own but happen to not only cross but completely overtake the lives of these poor characters who end up in extraordinary circumstances without ever seeing it coming. Our protagonist Summer falls in the same fate too. At the beginning, he's a normal 25-year-old struggling immigrant living in London. With a broken English, low income from doing odd jobs, he resides in a single-room apartment alongside his roommate Zain, who himself is a Pakistani immigrant. What's interesting about this is that Yash Chopra, in subtle terms, hints here how people from the Indian subcontinent end up all bonding in foreign lands because to everyone else, really, they're all the same. And people are all the same, only if they can get beyond the tags of names, religions, geographical bounds and colors of their skins. A person is defined by their virtues and not anything else. This ideology is perhaps the only one that's consistent in this entire film. Every other ideology that's been constructed, praised and methodically shown in the screenplay does not make nearly the same impact as this very basic dynamic in the setting of the film. This is also why the beginning half of Jab Tak Ajan is so interesting, so beautiful to look at, and just serene to experience. As once you're done watching the first half of the film, you come out with the feeling that this could be any romance film. That in your memories, it molds itself into whatever feeling you have for that particular day. There's many aspects to look at here. Despite the fact that Summer is struggling to make ends meet, doing anything he can, he still somehow ends up in a preferable situation. It's almost like the higher powers favor him. Why is it though? The song Challa, the very first one to appear in the film. The word Challa itself does not have a clear meaning. Its origins lie in the word Jalla, which itself varies its uses based on what one is trying to say. Someone who's a bit crazy, someone who's in love, someone who's a vagabond, a nomad, just oozing the sense of freedom which is exactly what the song feels like too. It sounds like it's an incomplete song, the wording so beautiful would make only a wake impact on you, the rhythm itself so heavily relying on the tunes of an acoustic guitar. It just all feels rather raw, the bare bones of what a studio version song should be. And funny enough, it was one of Ravi Shergal's first playback songs, if not the first in general. What's interesting here is Shara Khan's take on the entire thing. It's very nice. Uh, Rabbi, I've heard his songs before. I think this is one of the first times that he's done a playback for anyone. I think he's got one of the Sufiest, most beautiful, smooth voices. And I'm really nobody to uh, choose the people who do sing for me. I think uh, when you have someone like Mr. Yash Chopra, when you have A.R. Rahman Sahib, when you have Gulzar Sahib, and even otherwise, any director, I have never suggested a voice for myself. A uh, lot of wonderful singers have sung for me. And I think it's really, really fantastic that Rabbi has sung the song for me. And when I was singing it, I sing my song out. I normally don't uh, ever mouth it. I, I sing the song out and I feel the song. And to be really honest, the way Rabbi has sung it, and I'm really too small a person in terms of these big names to comment on the greatness of Rabbi as a singer and as a musician, but I, I really felt it. I used to feel really nice doing Challah. You know, I don't agree with it, but then uh, everybody has a right to say what they want to say. and. Uh, God bless them. But I think it really suits me as an actor. I felt very nice singing his voice. Notice how he says he doesn't agree with it. This is perhaps Sharak being Sharak, always in praise of someone else but having a decided standpoint against it as well. Perhaps he just wanted to say that he didn't agree with the ideology of the song, that one shouldn't be a nomad, that one should have a home, a place to belong, a people to love and really, that kind of sums up Sharak as a person. Not as an actor, as a person. And even though Rabbi Shergal's voice almost suits Sharak, it still transcends into something else with the imagery of London's best areas, countered with its least impressive ones. This allows the audience to breathe in the grandeur of the most economical city in the world, but through the eyes of someone who's financially struggling in this very town. Challa thus works to a great extent. In order to set up the character of Summer, he is someone who's very positive, very optimistic, and like Sharak defines him, he is made happy by little things and sad by only those that are maybe too much for anyone to handle, like the loss of a great love, as we will see with the film's progression. The song also introduces Mira's character again to show how in a big city, the world can still be a small place, 
and paths can cross if destinies align.